Hello, thanks for joining me. In this video, I'm going to be going over my beta flight settings for the long range FPV quad that I've, well, you can read in the description for the uh, specifics about all the components, but uh, this will, this tune will be most relevant to people that are using uh, the, the same components, like same motor, ESC, and frame. All right, so we'll get started by clicking the connect button in the top right after the uh, correct COM port is shown up. Uh, I guess nothing to show you on the uh, setup tab. Now here on the ports tab, if you're using the same flight controller and you're making your build uh, like mine, these are all the, you can see all the UARTs I use for everything here. Uh, UART 1 is the receiver. UART 2 I'm not using. UART 3 is GPS. UART 4 is my ESC telemetry. And UART 5 I'm using for my TBS Smart Audio. Onto the configuration tab. I always have my motor direction reversed. I, that way the quad will sort of push its way past branches if you run into anything rather than pulling the branch in towards you and possibly making you crash. Uh, so I'm using D-Shot D 600 at 8K. And of course we've got uh, bi-directional D-Shot on so that I can use RPM filtering. My motor idle is at 5.25. Uh, and the JBF7 unfortunately doesn't have a barometer, so that's not turned on, just the accelerometer, which you need for uh, GPS rescue as well as auto level mode. I always set the maximum arm angle to 180, just so you can still arm if you happen to have your quad crash and be upside down. You can disarm and arm again. Uh, crossfire is selected, of course, because that's what I'm using for my um, control link. And you can see there just what uh, other features I've got highlighted. Uh, for GPS, I'm using the Matex, Matex SAM M8Q. So I've got the UBlox protocol selected and AutoBOD autoconfig so that we can use um, a baud rate higher than the default, which is for some reason always 9600 on GPSs. I like to have set home point once selected so that if you crash and disarm and then rearm, your home point will not be changed to wherever it was that you crashed. It'll stay at wherever it was set when you plugged the battery in before taking off. I always turn off all the beeper things. They, I don't use any of that except for the D-Shot beacon and uh, the D-Shot beeper. Okay, on the power and battery tab, with the JBF7 flight controller and the iFlight 50 amp ESC, the amperage meter should be set to 100 for the scale. And then these are the settings I use for my lithium ion packs or my 18650 uh, 6S2P lithium ion packs. That's what I fly most often on this quad, so it's set up for that. It can go down to a lower cell voltage than 3.1, but after 3.1, it ends up uh, going down somewhat quickly. Next is the PID tuning tab. Before I cover this section, I've tuned all the quads used for my videos, and I think I've shot some good quality footage. That said, there's always room for improvement, and I know from reading the comment section that some of you are really good at this. I would like to hear your thoughts or suggestions, particularly around tuning the iTerm. With some input from the community, I would like to post a follow-up video with further tuning suggestions. All right, let's move on to the settings I've got here. Uh, let's start with the stick control stuff. So I've got my stick response way down because I want to have uh, soft stick sensitivity for the gentle turns, trying to do cinematic flying, or at least you know not being too jerky with my movements while I'm flying. So I've got my feed forward transition at 0 0.7. I like I was saying, stick response down at 0 0.5. My throttle boost is up at 10, just because it tends to be a big, heavy quad that I'm flying with the large battery, so that helps out a bit. I've got my set point at 9, although if you uh, do flips and rolls during your long-range flights, you might want to have that a bit lower, possibly all the way down to 6. I don't really do flips and rolls, and I'd rather have it feel a little bit tighter in the turns, so I like it up, up a little bit more. As for the sliders, I'd suggest uh, if you want to try my tune, start off with the master slider at 1, and just adjust your PD balance and PD gain and stick response. 
give it a test flight, and then try moving this up one or two notches and flying it again, checking the motor temperatures until you get up to about here. I should also mention that I have D-min turned off. Okay, moving on to the rates. Uh, like I was saying, my center sensitivity, I like really low. And then I've got a decent amount of expo on there as well. And then my max rate is fairly close to the same for all of them, but I do like it to be a little bit lower on pitch and a little bit lower on yaw. I've got a throttle expo set up of 25% expo at a midpoint of 0 0.32. This makes it a little bit easier to do slow, slow maneuvering, like flying close in between trees. And uh, it also helps a lot for, uh, for landing. It makes landing a lot easier. My TPA, I've changed just a little bit from the uh, defaults. All right, now the filters. And I'd same as with the, uh, the PID sliders, I don't suggest just jumping straight to this. I'd suggest first, you know, after you finished your build, try flying your quad with these settings and then move these up a couple of notches and try flying your quad again. Make sure the motors aren't too warm. Move them up again a little bit more. Check your motors again. And then I think if you can get up to uh, 1.6 on, on these and your motors are fine, then you can either keep trying to move these up a little bit. And then I'd, if you just want to do the simple slider thing for your filters, I'd suggest an endpoint to try to get to is probably being something like this. Uh, if you want to try to get a little bit better performance out of it by turning some filters off, then if your quad's okay making it to to this point, then I would suggest before you turn filters off, try turning the gyro filter all the way up to 1.2, or sorry, all the way up to 2, and make sure that your motors don't get hot like this, and then you can start trying to go through turning things off. So say so turn that off first, another test flight, check your motor temperatures. And if that's good, then you can uh, turn this off and have that at set to try at 90, I'd say at first. Make sure you change this to bi quad. Test fly that again now. And then if everything's working there, you can try turning this one off now. And then after that, if your motors are still your motor temperatures are still good, you can try moving this up to 100. And on some freestyle quads, I think people are even turning this one off, but uh, I prefer to leave this on uh, at the same time as this. I'm still actually debating in, about whether I get a little bit less uh, D-term noise coming through in the higher end if I leave a uh, PT1 on as well. Of course, I'm using the gyro RPM filtering, so there's my settings for that, and uh, the dynamic notch. All right, onto the receiver tab. There's not much that I've changed here. Uh, the stick low and high threshold, um, set up my channel mapping correctly for my transmitter. And then I've also changed the auto smoothness. And again, this is, this is probably a little bit high if you uh, prefer freestyle kind of flying but it's great for uh, adding a little more smoothness if you're trying to get cinematic long range shots. On the modes tab, I guess I'll just go through each of them here. On aux one, I just use that for arming. Uh, aux two, I use for my beeper, as well as my flip over after crash. Since it's a three position switch on my, uh, on both my transmitters, my Tyrannus X9D and the x Lite. On AUX3, I have angle mode set to the second and third click on the switch, and GPS rescue set to just the third click. So usually when I lose video, I'm just gonna change into auto level mode and give a bunch of throttle, and just not even worry about using GPS rescue. And then if I still don't get video back after auto level and using throttle for several seconds, then I'll switch to GPS rescue. So it just makes it convenient using it, uh, having it all on the same switch. 
Motors tab, but there's nothing to show there. OSD, this is all the OSD elements I have set up for when I'm flying. I think all of them are pretty straightforward for understanding. Uh, the battery efficiency is one that I like. It shows you an, an estimate of how many milliamp hours you're using per kilometer. There's also a timer remaining time estimate. And that'll use, I believe it uses your milliamp hour count as well as your minimum and maximum battery settings in the uh, power and battery tab to give you a time estimate of how much flight time it thinks you have left. Right, on the video transmitter tab, both the video transmitters that I use use the same information. The uh, Rush Tank Ultimate Plus as well as the TBS Unify HV SMA. I'll leave a link in the description for the correct file to load up for this. And that's going to be about it for this one. Uh, there'll be a follow-up video later on in which I'll be covering more specific GPS and fail-safe settings. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.